In this part, we'll take a look at irrigation. And 70% of all fresh water used by humans is for irrigation. Uh, this number can be somewhat argued, but it is the biggest use of fresh water. And let's take a look at what can happen when you overuse irrigation. Uh, in other words, you're putting too much, you get what's called water logging. And here the water table is so high that this water is no longer infiltrating the soil. So whatever plants are here, they can have um, plant roots that become suffocated, meaning that they're not able to get the oxygen that they need or they're too wet so that they end up rotting. When we use a lot of irrigation water from the ground, we experience soil salinization, which is the buildup of salts in the surface soil layers. And so it's a widespread, widespread problem. And um, basically, when that irrigated wa irrigation water evaporates, it's going to leave behind salts that it was containing. These are salts, not necessarily sodium chloride, more like calcium carbonate, also called limestone, or magnesium carbonate. These are things that the water can pick up while sitting in the ground. How can we prevent it? Well, one is you can plant crops that don't need a lot of irrigation. You can irrigate with water that is low in salt content, if you have it. And you can irrigate efficiently, using only as much water as necessary. And in conventional irrigation, only 43% of the water reaches the plants. A lot of it evaporates while it's in the air. Um, so sometimes what we use instead is drip irrigation, where the water arrives in drips targeted to plant roots. And this conserves water, saves money, and reduces problems like salinization. If salinization has occurred, one way you can reverse it is wait for rain to flush away the salts. You can also plant salt tolerant plants, which is just more a way of dealing with the situation. Um, or you can flush the soil with large quantities of less saline water, but this can lead to water logging. So um, let's go back to uh, kind of shift gears here a little bit and talk about solutions to overusing water. Just want to point out that the Santa Barbara water system rocks because it's very versatile. We get water from Lake Achuma. We also get water from um, local wells, like you see here. And um, we're also using reclaimed water to irrigate um, golf courses and schools. And we also have access to state water brought in from the aqueduct. How can we use less water in the home? Well, here's a list of a few things you can do. And um, I'll just let you read that list yourself. And I'll focus in on some of these that might be less uh, known to you. So we'll take a look at xeriscaping and gray water. Xeri means dry. So this is landscaping with drought tolerant native vegetation that doesn't need much rainfall. Here you can see different cacti and um, stones. So we saw this being done at San Marcos in the senior lawn where a year ago it was grass. Now it's mulch and native plants. Gray water is a big deal. You can save water by reusing it for irrigation. So if you take a look at the water coming from this tub, this sink, and this washing machine, it's going into the tree here and um, in other parts of the landscape. You can divert it to go to the sewer if you need to. Um, the one thing that it's not coming from is toilets, because that would be gross. Um, but really that would pose a health hazard. That water must go to a treatment plant, or in the case of my home, it goes to our septic tank. Uh, I did this um, replumbing of our house about a year ago or so. So um, this um, drain is now um, carrying all of our water except for toilet water out to our fruit trees. And it was a big deal. It's a very costly thing to do. Depends on your house. In my case, I have a, a concrete slab foundation, which means my plumbing is underneath, and I had to cut through that. And um, you can see where the pipes ended up leaving my house. And so I have two rows here. One of these rows is, bringing, is carrying the gray water, and one of them is carrying the, um, the toilet water. And um, so, and this is the pipe as it's going off to some of our fruit trees. And I also have it set up so that if I need to, um, I can divert it back, all the water, to going to our septic tank. As far as farms go, one solution in agriculture is to use high efficiency irrigation techniques like the drip line irrigation, using reclaimed water from wastewater treatment plants, as we're doing with golf courses. You can line irrigation canals, perhaps with plastic or clay, to prevent leaks, and, um, and all sorts of things, choosing appropriate, uh, appropriate crops, 
um, perhaps developing genetically modified crops that don't need as much water, and eliminate government subsidies of any inappropriate crops and methods. The government will often support or give farmers a discounted rate on water, a, a severely discounted rate on water, to help them grow the kind of crops that are essential for the economy. How do you deal with, or um, what's another situation that you can use for um, for providing the water uh, that you need? One is you can do desalination, and you guys read about this in the book. This occurs by two main processes. One is reverse osmosis, as some of you might have in your home. You're just filtering water by forcing it through an expensive membrane with tiny, tiny pores. And the other is distillation. You're basically boiling the water and you're condensing the pure steam back to water. But these both require a lot of energy. So it's really not practical in most situations, unless you're a Middle East country and you have um, lots of money for now. Santa Barbara did build a desalination plant and they're pursuing another one. This one was built in the 1990s in response to a big drought that occurred then, but it was operated for only two weeks and then they shut it down because it was not worth the expense of operation. Most of the equipment here was sold off to the Middle East or some other places, but um, they have now reinvested in desalination technology. So they're gonna be um, getting that plant going online. You can probably find lots of headlines about that in the newspaper. Okay, so this is kind of what I wanted to go over with you. Thanks for tuning in.